Even after 111 years on the ocean floor, the RMS Titanic is still capable of surprising people. In 2023 two companies combined to offer a new, unprecedented look at the Titanic wreckage, and it seems even they were shocked at what they found. Not only does this groundbreaking research bring into question many things we thought we knew about the 1912 disaster, but it also allows us to get up close to dozens of personal possessions that the passengers had brought on board. And one particular discovery was called astonishing, beautiful, and breathtaking. Experts made a breathtaking discovery among the Titanic wreckage. The organizations responsible for bringing this new evidence to light are Magellan Limited and Atlantic Productions. Magellan is a company that specializes in deep sea mapping and is the driving force behind the research, while Atlantic is shooting a documentary about the work. And what work it is. In a press release, Atlantic revealed that Magellan had created a digital twin of the ship which it claimed would completely rewrite everything we know about the tragedy. That sounds like a tall order for any Titanic study in 2023. After all, it's perhaps the most famous ship in the world, and it's been studied, analyzed, and researched consistently over the 111 years since it sank. There was, of course, also a world-conquering movie that sparked a whole new level of interest in the tragedy. But for some scientists, there has long been a cause to recontextualize the Titanic. Park Stevenson has visited the Titanic no fewer than five times in the past 18 years and has no doubt spent even longer studying the wreck. In May 2023 he told BBC Radio 4's Today Show, I've seen enough in my years of studying the Titanic that I am suspicious of the narrative that we've become accustomed to over the past century. This even includes how the iceberg hit the ship. Stevenson noted that the common theory is that when the Titanic struck the iceberg that sunk it, the iceberg supposedly crashed into the ship's starboard side. I'm seeing a growing amount of evidence in recent years that suggests Titanic actually grounded, ran over a submerged shelf of the iceberg, which was the first scenario proposed back in April 1912 he said. And that's why this new research is so important. There is still much to learn from the wreck, which is essentially the last surviving eyewitness to the disaster Stevenson said. She has stories to tell. It seems that Magellan wanted to help Titanic to tell them. Yet despite what you may think, it's not easy to study the doomed vessel, even after all these years. We are, after all, talking about a wreck that people couldn't even find until 1985. That was some 73 years after it had vanished beneath the waves. And when Robert Ballard and Jean-Louis Michel did first find the sunken Titanic, they almost immediately tried to map it. In fact, Ballard collated his underwater images into a photo mosaic that was later published by National Geographic. But the problem with all that is it requires interpretation. It requires human interpretation, and there are gaps in the knowledge, Stevenson told NPR in May 2023. And that's where Magellan comes in. Magellan spent five years creating the technology it would need to reveal the secrets of the Titanic. Part of the problem was that the wreck is particularly hard for humans to explore under normal circumstances. Imagine you're at the bottom of the ocean, there's no light, you can't see anything, all you have is a flashlight, and that beam goes out by 10 feet, that's it. Jeremy Warich from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Ocean Exploration Program told NPR. In the summer of 2022 Magellan's equipment was ready to launch. The team set about conducting what has been dubbed the largest underwater scanning project ever conducted. The project involved repeatedly sending two remote-controlled submersibles 12,500 feet down into the Atlantic Ocean to visit the wreck. The craft were known as Romeo and Juliet, and they spent six weeks and 200 hours scanning the remains of the Titanic from every conceivable angle. In the end, Romeo and Juliet captured over 700,000 images of the wreck, as well as shooting 4K video footage underwater. It all amounted to 16 terabytes of data. We believe that this data is approximately 10 times larger than any underwater 3D model that's ever been attempted before, Richard Parkinson, Magellan's CEO, told NPR. Inevitably, though, gathering said data was far from an easy task. Gerhard Seifert from Magellan was in charge of planning the trips to the Titanic. He told the BBC 
the depth of it, almost 4,000 meters, represents a challenge, and you have currents at the site, too. And we're not allowed to touch anything so as not to damage the wreck. He added, and the other challenge is that you have to map every square centimeter, even uninteresting parts, like on the debris field you have to map mud, but you need this to fill in between all these interesting objects. What's more, this debris field is incredibly extensive. When the Titanic sank, it broke into two pieces before resting on the seabed. So now the bow and the stern of the ship are roughly 2,600 feet apart, encircled by a debris field that is 3 by 5 miles wide. This expanse contains all kinds of items, such as scattered pieces of the ship's structure, unopened champagne bottles, and passengers' shoes. Yet the team wasn't just there to perform their scan. In the rush to try to discover new and exciting things about the famous ship, it might have been easy for the researchers to forget that they were visiting the site of a tragedy. But the Magellan explorers took the time to hold a flower-laying ceremony to commemorate the 1,500 souls that had been lost that night in April 1912. They were also careful not to break the rules about entering or touching the ship. These rules are in place after decades in which members of the public have actually been able to pay to see the Titanic. Between 1998 and 2012 a company called Deep Ocean Expeditions, for instance, took almost 200 trips to the wreck, sometimes charging tourists as much as $59,000 a head. And Oceangate Expeditions has recently been in the news after suffering its own tragedy on one of its journeys into the deep. Yet Titanic does have some protections in place. In 2012 the wreck became shielded by the UNESCO Convention on the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage. And eight years later, the US and the UK united to limit the amount of access explorers would have to the site. Despite all of this, though, Magellan was able to get what it came for. When we saw the data come in it was all worth it, Seifert told NPR. The level of detail we saw and recorded was extraordinary. The researchers took the next few months to process the data and render an unprecedented look at the Titanic. What we've created is a highly accurate photorealistic 3D model of the wreck, Seifert told NPR. Previously footage has only allowed you to see one small area of the wreck at a time. This model will allow people to zoom out and to look at the entire thing for the first time, this is the Titanic, as no one had ever seen it before. The model or digital twin, has even caused seasoned Titanic experts to get excited. Stevenson and maritime artist Marshall both got an early look at the scan. We've both seen it with our eyes. We've both seen thousands of digital images of the wreck and imagery, moving imagery, Stevenson told NPR. But we'd never seen the wreck like this. It was different, but at the same time you just knew it was right. The possibilities presented by this new research were exhilarating to consider. It would allow researchers to get hands-on with the Titanic, of course, but it would also carve a path for other wreck sites. It takes us further into new technology that's going to be the standard, I think, not just for Titanic exploration, but all underwater exploration in the future," Stevenson said. For Stevenson, too, this marks a turning point in Titanic studies. We're essentially getting to the end of the first generation of Titanic research and exploration, and we're getting ready to transition into the next generation," he said. And I think this tool basically signals a shift from that generation to the next. This new scan even allows you to see such minute details as a serial number emblazoned on a propeller. It allows you to see the wreck as you can never see it from a submersible, and you can see the wreck in its entirety, you can see it in context and perspective," Stevenson told the BBC. And what it's showing you now is the true state of the wreck. It also shows the full extent of the debris field, which is home to parts of the ship, statues, and a discovery that took the researcher's breath away. One touching discovery was the footwear that can be seen in the debris field. It is chilling when you see objects like a pair of shoes, because there was once a body there, Titanic researcher Mandela Baudelier told ITV in May 2023. It makes you think, everybody talks about how the Titanic was a wonderful ship of dreams, but ultimately it's a grave. And the next headline-grabbing find brought that home to people. It was a necklace found on the ocean floor that captured the researcher's imagination. The necklace was gold and had what is reported to be the tooth of a megalodon inside of it. The CEO of Magellan, Richard Parkinson, 
told ITV the discovery was astonishing, beautiful, and breathtaking. Part of the reason for this is probably because the 1997 movie Titanic also centered around a necklace on the ocean floor. In the movie, the necklace was called the Heart of the Ocean, and it belonged to the character portrayed by Kate Winslet. It was a diamond necklace, and it played a significant role in the plot. It was also a piece of total fiction, made up as a plot contrivance for the movie. Yet as soon as you say, a necklace was found among the Titanic wreckage, you immediately bring the movie to mind. The real necklace, though, hasn't been worn by its owner for 111 years. If Magellan has its way, though, it will soon change the watery fate of the Megalodon necklace. Its plan, according to ITV, is to analyze surviving footage of the passengers of the Titanic using artificial intelligence. They hope the technology will pinpoint who wore the necklace on board and identify its owner. This could then allow the researchers to track down any living relatives and maybe even return the jewelry to an heir. The obvious question that arises is, how do the researchers know the necklace contains the tooth of a megalodon? The website of British newspaper The Daily Mail reported that it had contacted Magellan for further information, but that it heard nothing back. The site did, though, contact an expert on sharks to get their opinion. And Catalina Pimiento, a paleontologist at Swansea University in Wales, may not have said what Titanic followers wanted to hear. Pimiento said she would essentially need to have more than just a picture to make a judgment. The tooth seems to have a neck which is the darker area between the tooth crown and the root, she told the Daily Mail. But because the picture is so low quality, it is hard to see if this is the case. The size of the tooth in the necklace also seemed to cause some disagreement between the experts. Megalodon teeth are of course very large, but you can also find teeth of very young individuals, which can be small, or from the back of the jaw, Pimiento told the Daily Mail. While Michael Benton from the University of Bristol in England claimed that it was more likely it would be a tooth from a modern shark rather than a fossil. He said, megalodon teeth cover your hand. Whether it's a great white or another modern shark probably can't be said for sure. For the time being, then, the necklace will join the list of unanswered questions about the Titanic that this new research may help to solve. The most pressing one for Stevenson is, of course, where the actual iceberg struck the ship. We really don't understand the character of the collision with the iceberg, he explained to the BBC. We don't even know if she hit it along the starboard side, as is shown in all the movies. She might have grounded on the iceberg. The Magellan model could provide an answer. That's what Anthony Geffen the CEO of Atlantic Productions is hoping. Great explorers have been down to the Titanic, but actually they went with really low-resolution cameras, and they could only speculate on what happened," he told the BBC. We now have every rivet of the Titanic, every detail, we can put it back together, so for the first time we can actually see what happened and use real science to find out what happened. He said new discoveries were being made all the time. Stevenson was excited about the possibilities of the objective data, too. This model is the first one based on a pure data cloud that stitches all that imagery together with data points created by a digital scan, and with the help from a little artificial intelligence, we are seeing the first unbiased view of the wreck," he explained to the BBC. And according to those who have studied the 3D model, it has already revealed previously unknown things about the Titanic. Geffen explained to newspaper The New York Times that one startling new piece of information concerned a lifeboat on the Titanic. He claimed that it had been rendered useless by a piece of metal that had stopped it from being able to launch. Geffen also claimed that soon Titanic fans would get the opportunity to see the ship sink in virtual reality or augmented reality. All our assumptions about how it sank and a lot of the details of the Titanic comes from speculation because there is no model that you can reconstruct or work exact distances," Geffen told the Associated Press. I'm excited because this quality of the scan will allow people in the future to walk through the Titanic themselves and see where the bridge was and everything else. Stevenson was quick to agree. I'm seeing details that none of us have ever seen before, and this allows me to build upon everything that we have learned to date and see the wreck in a new light," he said. We've got actual data that engineers can take to examine the true mechanics behind the breakup and the sinking, and thereby get even closer to the true story of the Titanic disaster. 
One other major benefit of this new model is that it has an effect frozen the Titanic at the moment it was scanned in the summer of 2022. The great ship is not just sitting on the seabed, untarnished by time, waiting to be discovered and explored. In fact, the Titanic is deteriorating so much with each passing year that some scientists thought the ship would be completely gone by 2030. The problem is that bacteria is simply eroding the metal of the ship. Like all things, eventually, Titanic will vanish entirely, Patrick Leahy from Triton Submarines told Business Insider in 2019. It will take a long time before the ship completely disappears, but the decomposition of the wreck is to be expected and is a natural process. With time ticking away, then, Magellan's 3D model could preserve the Titanic for the next generation of researchers. According to the Smithsonian, it was the Titanic sinking that made the perfect environment for iron-eating bacteria to grow. In fact, the species of bacteria that will eventually spell the end of the ship takes its name from the vessel. Halomonas Titanici. It lives in the rusticles that have grown all over the wreck. The Smithsonian puts a slightly more optimistic spin on this process, saying that the bacteria are recycling the nutrients into the ocean ecosystem. When the Magellan team created the map of the Titanic, they also noticed how badly parts of the ship had been eroded. Atlantic Productions told NBC News that one major area of deterioration was apparent in a famous part of the ship. This included the room of Captain Edward John Smith, and we discovered that the iconic captain's bathtub has now disappeared from view it said. Stevenson noted on Facebook in May 2023 that he and Marshall had noted the degradation when they'd first seen Magellan's 3D model. This was not necessarily because the corrosion is advancing faster than we expected, but rather because we had underestimated how severely the wreck was broken when the two main sections impacted the ocean floor, he wrote. We had always suspected that the port side of the bow section had suffered more injury than is normally assumed, but now we had glaring proof of it. There has been glaring proof of another problem bothering the Titanic wreck, too. National Geographic magazine reported in June 2023 that the debris surrounding the sunken ship is actually covered with human trash, such as beer bottles and cargo nets. Well-intentioned Titanic tourists have also placed numerous plaques and memorials around the site. But all of this human contact is only causing the ship to deteriorate further. It hasn't helped that some of the submersibles that visited Titanic in the past touched the wreck. National Geographic reported that in 2001 an adventurous couple got married on the bow of the ship. And there was the time a submersible accidentally struck the Titanic. But this new research model will allow scientists to study the ship from every angle in incredible detail, without having to worry about the passing of time. It will surely only deepen our understanding of what happened on that tragic night in April 1912. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.